Today we talk science. More importantly, we're comparing a pod filter versus a modified stock air box. And which one is the right one for your build? So stay tuned. So imagine this, you've dreamt big and you're planning on building a kick-ass scooter. Let's just say no expense spared, you want the best bang for buck you can do. So you pony up and you buy just a whiz bang 70cc kit. Let's just say it's either a street race, a Polini or a Molossi kit. The best you can get, it's the one that you've always wanted despite which brand it is. You go and buy yourself a just absolute shiny, beautiful exhaust system, whether it be Polini, Molossi, Stage 6, or a Yasuni, it doesn't really matter. But you've saved your hard earned money for it. Now, you've also paired it with a 21 millimeter or a bigger carburetor that's just gonna suck all the air and all the fuel in that will be needed to fill that 70cc cylinder. No expense spared. And then it comes to pod filter or air box. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Because if you got more capacity in that cylinder, you need to fill it with more air. More air, more fuel equals more power. Now, let's just face it. This thing, its biggest drawback is the amount of air it will flow. It is limited by this here little snorkel on the front. That's as much air as this air box will be able to supply. And that's why most people go for the pod filter. Um, it virtually has no restriction. It can suck as much air as it can get and definitely more air than you can put in a 70cc cylinder. So it is perfect for your 70cc kit, whichever one it was. But it comes with one massive drawback and that is noise. Make no mistake, this son of a bitch, although it sucks for days, it's as loud as a 747 on takeoff. It is extremely loud, obnoxious loud. Now I'm talking, when I ride past little kids in the street, they put their fingers in their ears. Now it was fun, really fun but after a while it has started to drag on. Which led me to think, what if I can modify the stock air box? Can I get all the good stuff from this into this with none of the bad stuff of this and none of the bad stuff of this? So effectively, can I combine the two and get the best of both worlds and eliminate the bad things of both of them? Okay, so here we have the stock air box in all its glory. Now over here is the snorkel that provides your cylinder with all the air. As you can see, this is very small and very restrictive. In fact, it's so restrictive, when I bolted it to the bike, it revved out at 3,600 RPM. Extremely restrictive and no good at all. So then what I did is I put a stage six air filter in it and it now revved out to 4,100 RPM. Now that's not even enough to engage the clutch. So the bike pretty much went in nowhere, but that didn't stop me. The test would continue. I modified the air box. Now on the back of it, you can see three holes. One, two, three. Those three holes are 21 millimeters. And I got a little bit of plastic tube and I flared the back ends of the plastic tube and then squeezed them into the air box. Now, not only do I now have inlet from up here from the little snorkel, I have air inlet from these three holes. That's a fair bit. 
probably still not as comparable as what you would get from this, but a massive improvement. So here is where the test kind of begins. We know with a stock air box, we can only rev to 3,600, 4,100 with a filter in it. Still nowhere near this, but how will it go with this, with this modification here? And will I get everything that I want from the pod filter into the stock air box? Now what I'm setting out to do here is to pretty much prove that with a little bit of thought, you can modify something like this to do everything like this. Everything that this pod filter will do, but with none of the drawbacks. And the biggest drawback is sound. So let's get to it. I'll pull this apart so you can see the modification inside. And then we're going to take it out to the bike and we're going to do some real world testing. We're going to compare the stock air box, well, modified stock air box with the pod filter. See if we can get the same performance, but more importantly, lose the biggest drawback and that is sound. So that's what this video is all about. Let's go. Okay, here is the back half of the air box right here. We've got the stage six filter, which we will take out. And on the inside, you can see those pop stuffers that I have put in. Now they protrude pr approximately 20, 20 millimeters inside the airbox. And the idea is that the sound that reverberates out of the carb has to bounce around the airbox before it will exit here. That's what makes it a lot quieter. Or at least that's in my mind what's gonna make it a lot quieter. I do know a little bit about sound and the more bends, the more turns that you can put in something, the more the sound has to bounce off it and uh, the, the quieter the sound actually gets. So that's my theory. We provide more air and get less sound. All right, let's put it back together. Let's get it on the bike and let's get this test underway. Let's cut out the bullshit and see if this actually works. Okay, now I'm gonna to try to make this as scientific as my feeble brain can muster, but the first test will be the stock modified air box at two meters with a decibel meter at idle. From idle, we'll increase the RPMs up to 3000 RPMs, then four and a half thousand RPMs. Then we're gonna take it for a ride and see what it actually sounds like by ear. And we'll first test at idle. Then we'll go to 3,000 and then 4,500 RPM. Again, in the name of science and being as scientific as I possibly can, I've gone one step further with this test and now we're gonna take the bike for a ride and this time we're gonna take the decibel meter with us. Very scientific like, I have taped the decibel meter right near the airbox so we can get a true and accurate reading of how loud the stock airbox is compared to the aftermarket pod filter.
so with the decibel meter sitting right next to the air box we can see that was a clear 122 decibels even but how loud is it if we just put the decibel meter on the side of the road and ride past up so that'll be our next test Let me know in the comments below guys, are you guys running a pod filter or are you running a modified air box? I'd really like to see what you guys do and see what your results are. See if they're comparable to mine. Okay, up next we have the Polini pod filter and we are going to run exactly the same test that we did with the modified stock air box. So let's get through it to it just to show you that it's the same. Here we have our decibel meter and our tape and the bike on the same marks it was before. So, how much louder will the pod filter be than the stock modified airbox? It's time to find out. All right, now it's time to bolt the decibel meter back to the crankcase right next to the pod filter and let's see what the results are. Very scientific, currently reading 67 with my voice and there is the noisy filter. So the results of that test, 122.4. So not quite as loud as what I expected it. It definitely sounds louder to the ear and when you play the video back, I'm pretty sure you'll hear it louder on the video as well. But we still have one more test to go. Let's put this on the side of the road in the same position as before. 
let's see if we get a difference there as well. Okay, and the results are in. Podvilta versus modified stock air box. Which one was louder and which one gave the best results, if any difference? All right, well, the results are pretty much the way I thought. The modified air box was a whole lot quieter, pretty much across the board than the pod filter. I think, I think it is very obvious we have a winner. The modified airbox is way quieter than the pod filter. But did I notice a difference in performance? All right, so the jetting that I've got in this, the idle jet is at 36 and the pilot jet is at 102 and it, we have a Polini CP 21 millimeter carb. There is no difference. The only difference is how the bike feels, okay? So the bike actually accelerates a whole lot smoother. It's not as peaky as it is with this. Um, you pull the throttle and it's quite linear the way it rises in revs. Where this, it's a bit dead and then it peaks and then it's a bit dead and it peaks again. So all in all, I give it a 100% win to the modified airbox. Now, what's that mean for you? Realistically, you don't need one of these. You really don't. Unless maybe you're running a real big 125cc build or something like that. But for a 70cc build, this will get you just fine. In fact, both bikes, I saw a max rev of 10,100 RPMs. So they did essentially the exact same thing but this one was a whole lot less noisy now i guess the real big difference is if you are going to start to see a choke it's going to be from here right up here where it bolts to the carburetor that's going to be your choke point and as you can see the difference between the two is rather dramatic i'd say it's probably double the size here so essentially this one, I reckon, could feed air to a much bigger cylinder, um, maybe up to 125cc, something like that, because this is going to start restricting pretty soon, in fact. I think maybe 70cc is probably as big as what you want to go with here. Okay, it's not saying that you can't... It's not saying that you can't modify this as well, but we're starting to talk about a whole lot more work. So for your average 70cc build, Modify your stock airbox, guys. There's no need to go with one of these noisy fuckers because all it does is annoy you after a while and annoy everyone else on the street. You get the same, exactly the same, but quieter with this. So with that being said, guys, we're gonna draw this to an end. That is the end of Jogzilla. It's up, it's running. We've got the stock modified airbox in it and it's doing its job. I'm overly impressed with it. I love this bike, but one end brings a new beginning. Now, Jogzilla is done, it's built. Thanks for all your support, thanks for subscribing and leaving plenty of comments. You've helped the channel grow, we're up to 142 subscribers today. Hopefully, we see a whole lot more in the future, but that being said, next episode, we've got a new build, a new bike gets restored. I'm going to leave it as a bit of surprise. Now the next bike is already sorted, the build is underway. But what would you like to see in the future guys? Have you got any bikes that you would like me to build? I've already got a whole collection waiting. Maybe it's one that you just can't wait to see. Again, thanks for watching and subscribing. See you on the next one.